What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Puck You, Why Lose Sports NHL Wagering Podcast. Hope everyone woke up with some winners today. I'm Mike Burns along Why Lose NHL Handicapper, Less Victory. We're going to take a look at three games for you today and try and find you guys some pucky money. How are we doing today, Les? Oh, man. You got a lot of nerve fucking bringing that hat onto this show today, man. After what they did to us, that was our biggest bet on the card last night. They go into the third period with a 3-1 lead. The one of the, a great spot to be in. And the way I looked at this game was it's either you win this game, you may get into the playoffs, or you lose this game and your season's fucking done. For both teams. It's just kind of one of those spots for Pittsburgh and New Jersey. They got off to a pretty good start. Nadelkovic, I gotta give him some credit. He Played a hell of stood game on in. his stood on his head at a few uh, a few few different points in this game. But my God, what a piss poor fucking effort in that third period that like I am completely questioning the character of the New Jersey Devils because you're fucking fighting for your life and you lay an egg in the third period. You can't get the puck out. You can't do anything. You even got a power play on a call that should have never been a call when Malkin hit fucking whoever and you got mm-hmm. hurt. And then they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's hurt. We, we better call a penalty. Kind of boring, and but whatever. It, it should have been a penalty right from the start, but it's not very often you don't get a call and then a guy gets hurt and then is like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're that's, that's a penalty. Unless it's a major penalty, not a minor penalty. So, you know, I could agree with the Pittsburgh head coach. He was fucking losing it, and rightfully so. And then you don't score on it, and then you go to the box. You got guys blowing the zone, trying to get this breakaway shirt. You're up by two. You fucking don't even do stupid shit like that. Fucking piss me off, man. I was watching. I was super calm. The whole, oh, okay, 3-2. I'm like, fuck, I don't, I don't like that. That's, that's you know, I don't. Three, three, four, three, five. What the? Turn the TV off, through the remote. Fuck, I'm going to bed. This is bullshit. I am utterly disgusted with the New Jersey Devils. And I don't know why they think they need to be so fucking cute, especially in their own end, instead of winning those battles on the half wall. Like, that's how you win Stanley Cup is winning those fucking battles. And I don't know. I don't understand how the coaching staff is okay with it. How are they not fucking reaming guys out on the bench? I don't understand. What is it even? What is he even doing back there? Tell me. What am I fucking missing here? I I, I, I got nothing for you, man. Because I'm hot you, right you, now. You had I'm and, fucking and you hot. Absolutely should be. Listen, you had a quick glimpse into 75 games of my entire life watching <laughs> this fucking team because this is really who the Devils are right now. So. They completely shit the bed yesterday. Pretty, I mean, like they're they're done as far as the playoffs uh, are yeah. concerned. But they're gonna fucking win five three against the Rangers tonight. <laughs> fucking mark it down. It's gonna fucking happen because that's what this fucking team is. You know, tonight's gonna be a fucking you know wild one. It's gonna be five three over hitting for sure. It's I, I I got nothing to say about my guys, man. Nothing. To say I about hope my the guys. Rangers beat them ten fucking nothing <laughs> <laughs> because I I. I don't know how many times we have we have put money on the Devils this year, and I we just whether it's for them to win or to lose, that <laughs> we're just we just can't see them them right. Even it's like anything statistics, fuck it, throw it out. You're better off flipping a coin when the Devils are playing, whether they're going to win or lose. So they will not be on the card going forward for the rest of the season. Uh, and you know what? You win some, you lose some. But we did have a lot of success on last night's card. You know, we did catch the uh, Chicago plus one and a half. We had uh, we brought in the old Montreal Canadians that we were stressing about yesterday. Loved them enough. We put them on the card. They embarrass Florida. And you know what? Good on them. You know, we had a lot of good props bets. I'm my, sure you're going to get into those in a next week. Yeah, yeah. You were a little off on the 10-3, but you're you, so you were close. I, you know, it could it could have happened. Uh, we did get the Logan Thompson over 20, 25 and a half saves. Uh, Vegas walks all over fucking Vancouver, kind of as we we talked about yesterday. But just uh, a frustrating night where you win a lot of your bets and still don't turn green at the end of the night because of you know the, the devil, the fucking, fucking devils, fucking devils. So. Yeah, a, a lot of things went right for us last night. You know, obviously that Montreal game, that was a huge spot. Um, 
you know, Suzuki got on the score sheet, Caulfield, Barkov. We did miss on Reinhardt. Um, I'll definitely take five and fucking one any day of the week. Um, you gave out Marcia So in the Vegas game over here. I gave out Carlson. Both of them hit. Connor Garland, JT Miller found the score sheet as well. And uh, I got to be honest, man. I mean, like, you know, we talked about which way the Nashville game was going to go and where mm -hmm. the magic was. And magic is gone. The bees yeah. blanked them three, nothing. Um, you know, uh, Pasta and Zaka, they they did their job. They found the score sheet for us. But obviously, Forsberg and Yossi gets the goose egg. So what did we give out? Like 10, 10, 12 free picks on this podcast yesterday. And what did eight, nine of them hit? Just no big deal. No big crazy, deal. Crazy. But you it's know, like night. this is this is how it, it it goes. Sometimes you see everything and you see nothing. You know, yeah. so uh, you know, let's let's talk about flipping that coin, man. Let's let's get right into this matchup between the Devils and the Rangers. Devils are plus one seventy. Rangers are minus two hundred five at home. Six and a half is the over under. Rangers are going for the series sweep tonight. They've won the last three matchups against New Jersey by margin. All three games, more than one, are have won by multiple goals. We're going to have Cockadin in net tonight. He did post that 36 save shutout against the Isles. So uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get another one tonight against Shesterkin. <laughs> Rangers are 7 3 in their last 10, over hitting nine times. Um, Listen, one, one thing that I'm definitely keeping my eye on, and I don't know if he's actually going to get in the lineup tonight, and I fucking sure as shit hope he does because I want to see somebody pound his ass, is uh, Rempe against McDermott. Could yeah. have a potential rematch or a match because Rempe pissed out the first time. Uh, match going tonight. Not sure if Rempe's going to be in the lineup. I mean, uh, listen, man. You know, this, this could be a very easy, you know, 5-1 Ranger victory. You know, or this could be uh fucking five five three devils you know anomaly just don't know what kind of fucking team is going to come up but we do know what kind of fucking rangers team is going to come up yeah no definitely and new york is preparing for a playoff run they got upset last year you know obviously with a much earlier exit uh than they wanted to you know i kind of hope rempe is going to be in the lineup just for the sake of all right you know what Put them out first line, opening face off. No a better way to energize your New York team and all the fans at MSG than him squaring up with McDermott or whoever, whatever fucking crybaby on the jer jersey is going to go fight that monster. But just get it up, get it over with. Uh, you know, I think that'd be good for the game. I think it has to happen. I think it should happen. If I'm the Rangers coaching staff, you got to be looking to also get guys more playing time that are new to this organization. So I feel like this is a good time to bring Rempe into the game, especially with Florida skidding. Uh, you know, it kind of gives some more breathing room for the Rangers uh, to, you know, try to really challenge for the, that top spot in the East. Uh, they're, they're there right now. And it's, you know, this is really a, not really a significant kind of game. I mean, they got three points up on Carolina. So I guess, I guess they, they could get caught, uh, but no, I, I would put Rempe in the lineup tonight and I would be betting the over on penalty minutes. Is that a thing? Can you do that? Is that a line? Uh, we'll, we'll invent one tonight. That's for sure. <laughs> um, as far as the prop side of it, um, you know, you got to keep your eye on, on a uh, Panarin. Panarin's got a great career numbers against the Devils. He's got 13 goals, 28 assists um, in 32 games against New Jersey um, and a plus 18. Not too bad for him. And then, you know, a guy like Jack Hughes always always plays the Rangers tough. Um, in the three games that he's that he's played against the Rangers, he's got 19 shots on goal, two goals. Um, so you can you can find some value with with pairing up those guys. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm an asshole, but I'm not a fucking asshole that's going to sit here and say New Jersey's taking this fucking game. I mean, it's going to be Rangers all the way. I just know how this fucking uni bullshit universe works for New Jersey fans, and we're going to get a fucking glimpse of fucking hope. That's going to be fucking useless for for anything. So it's kind of one of those games with like, all right, everything is pointing to this. Okay, you better pick the other one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Whatever you feel wrong. good about, just go the opposite, and you're going to make some fucking money off this guy. There's just some teams out there now from an actual handicapping spot. There's just some teams out there that are tough to handicap. Ottawa's been a tough one this mm -hmm. year. New Jersey's been a tough one, and Pittsburgh. Those are three teams that have been really challenging. When I go back and I look at the stats of what teams we're betting on. We've done really well with Tampa. We've done well with uh, Toronto. Uh, we've done well with Dallas, Edmonton. 
uh, the Kings. You know, so once you understand that, you know what, these teams aren't working for us for whatever reasons, you know, because their game is such a, you know, influx, even Buffalo. Buffalo is another one that hasn't been super kind to us. Uh, obviously, we we still have done really well this season, but it's important to acknowledge those games and it's important to maybe fade those games because it seems like from our our standpoint of handicapping, all we have is stats mm-hmm. and history and trends. And with those certain teams, it just seems like none of that really applies uh, on a more consistent basis versus, you know, an Edmonton team or a Leaf team or, you know, one of the top better teams, they be, can they can be a little bit more predictable. Yeah, I mean, the Devils are definitely not fucking predictable at any sort. Um, but let's get into our second game on our feature here. We got Tampa going into Toronto. Tampa's going to be some road dogs here at plus 110. Toronto, the home favorites, minus 130, oh, six and a half for the over under here. Um, surprising to me, I didn't realize how dominant the Leafs have been. Eight over and two. Tampa. Eight, Eight and two. two. They've been killing them. But the last three games all needed overtime. So, you know, killing them with a capital K is kind of like that toss of the coin there. So we'll see how things go tonight. I mean, Tampa's yeah. been humming along. Eight, one and one their last 10, 4.2 goals per game. Got a hot ass power play at 35%. And their defense has started to come around. Now, I'm personally really liking how this Tampa team is shaping up. They're giving up 2.2 goals per game, 29 shots, almost 97% on their penalty kill in the last 10 games. Um, What do you see? What do you like about the Lightning these days? I kind of worry this is a Nashville spot for the Lightning. You know, uh, you know, we said it yesterday. Nashville goes on this run. I said that they're not going to show up against the Bruins. Uh, we stayed away from it because it was more of a spectacle kind of a game where you want to kind of watch it and kind of see, you know, are, was I right? Okay, yes, I was. Now, what does that mean going forward kind of spots? You know, could this be a spot for uh, Tampa to kind of have something similar? You know, they did give up four goals against the Red Wings, who have really struggled to score goals. Uh you know, their, their last, their last outing. So, you know, what gets hot gets cold Tampa's or uh, the Leafs have done a good job at, uh, you know, winning at home recently. And, you know, Matthews is buzzing again. Uh, you know, Marner's getting closer to get back into it. Uh, we're going to, you know, next weekend, we're going to see the Leafs in, in Detroit play. I really hope Marner's, right. Marner's going to be in it. Right. So uh, hoping he gets healthy again soon. Toronto just isn't that good defensively. They haven't been all year. Uh, they give up a lot of goals, uh, but they can score, obviously. So um, I'm kind of, you know, if you want to look at a prop bet that's going to probably pay different, it's gone an OT five out of the last six. Yeah. Right? Five out of the last six. You know, if you want to go throw an extra time kind of bet on this, you know, will this go into overtime, yes or no? You know, it's going to probably pay around plus 300. I, we called this on the Florida game the other night, and obviously Toronto, you know, kind of lit up Bobrovsky, and then Florida kind of made their push back, which we were one shot away from sending that to overtime until Matthews got the empty netter. So, you know, I don't mind it here. Five out of six, I, I'll take those odds at, uh, you know, plus 400 or whatever that's going to be. So could this game go to overtime? I would check the box, yes, and see if it hits. I mean, the, the over has come out when these two match up uh, quite often as well. Uh, last game that they had that Toronto won, 6-5. Toronto won in overtime, 4-3 in overtime. Uh, so, you know, I, I I think that especially because of the way that Samsonov is playing in net for Toronto, I mean, he's allowed three or more goals in four of his last five starts, 8-9-2 and a 3-0-6. Career against the Bolts, he's got an 8-33 save percentage against so, the Bolts. I just got a notification not long ago, and Wool is getting the green light now. Well, maybe they heard those numbers, and they were like, no fucking way, buddy. And Wool's numbers are really impressive against Tampa Bay. I, I, I posted a free pick video about this a little while ago. Uh, he's 3-0 and with uh, one point, I think it was 1.65 goals against average in his three starts against Tampa. So I don't know if I completely commit to trusting Wool yet. Uh, I, you know, he's still getting back and we're, we're talking about a red hot Tampa Bay lightning team here. But the, the one thing that's impressive for me for Toronto is they've been winning. They've won five out of the last seven and they've been doing it without the power play really producing. So that is in its own really important 
for Toronto going into the postseason as you can't expect a ton of power play opportunities. And they're doing a great job of winning games without that power play presence. Yeah, their power play has just been absolutely putrid. Um, they, they need Mitch Marner back in the worst kind of way. Um, did, did we get a uh, word on Morgan Riley? I believe he's back in the lineup tonight. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yes, he is. So that'll be some help on Toronto's back end. I mean, the defense has not been great. I do see this game going. I see this game going the over. Absolutely. Um, you know, the last time that we talked about Toronto, we talked about, you know, the line of Matthews, Bertuzzi and uh, Domi. Uh, absolutely flying, made some money off of those guys. I mean, you got to stay with the hot hand, got to stay with the trend. Um, last time we had Tampa on here, we were talking about Braden Point. He came out for us. So I, I definitely think that this is going to be a star-studded kind of affair with the lamp getting lit up a lot. And also, too, even for Tampa's side, you know, with Vasilevsky, I know he's 7-1-1 one one in his last 10, but I'm not completely sold that Vazzy's back. That's a tough, tough one to argue just because of how successful uh, Tampa's been. But they've also been successful because they've been scoring quite a few goals too, right? So it's it's tough to say he has been a lot better. He's okay. We'll put it this way: he's the best he's been all year. That's probably the best way to put it. What that means tonight, and he struggled playing in Toronto. You look at last year in the playoffs where Toronto finally won a fucking playoff series. He wasn't himself. He wasn't the Vassy postseason Vassy that you know we're used to seeing. So, is it just one of those breaks now that maybe it gets in his head a little bit that he kind of struggles with it? Like Toronto's really dominated them head to head, and a lot of those games have been at home. So it's it's kind of one of those teams where they get in your head sometimes, and I wonder if that's what's going on with Vasilevsky. Well, we'll see if he gets it right tonight. Um, I definitely, you know, I. I... I mean, it's, it's hard to argue that Toronto doesn't have his number, but I do like the way that Tampa's playing. Um, and I, I want to see some goals, baby. I want to see that the, those lamps get lit up nice and red up in Toronto tonight. I agree. I think it'll happen. Last game we got on featured. This is going to be a doozy of a one. We got Edmonton in Dallas. Edmonton coming in the road. Dogs plus 100. Dallas minus 120 at home. Six and a half for the over under. This is the third matchup. Between these guys this season, the road team has taken the other, uh, the previous two, four, three, respectively. Um, I mean, you know, Edmonton is, they're doing Edmonton things, man. They're six, two, and two. They're averaging 4.2 goals per game, 35 shots on goal, you know, almost a 40% power play. But I do think this is going to be a very tough task against these stars who only allow 24 shots on goal, 2.2 games, uh, goals per game and have an 83% penalty kill. I, I mean, listen, it, it's it's not hard to figure out the Oilers' recipe, right? I mean, McJesus does McJesus things, right? He's named the number one star of the month for March. Um, you know, Monday's overtime loss against the Blues was the first time that McDusty didn't have a multiple-point game in the last eight. You know, Dreisaitl's riding an eight-game point streak. You know, I... I <sighs> One thing I was looking for, right, because I, I, as I'm watching these games, I keep seeing his name pop up and keep seeing his name pop up. I couldn't find him on my side as far as a player prop, but Matias Ekholm, if you can find him out there, he's on a five-game point streak, and he's got 15 points in his last 10 games. I guarantee he's going to be plus money out there. Maybe you have it on your app or wherever it is, but I couldn't find him on mine. Um, keep an eye on Ekholm. He, he dishes it from the point, and he finds some shots that get through. What do you what do you like about what's going on in Edmonton? This is this is a great game. This is the kind of games that people want to watch. It's too bad we're not on the West Coast because we end up staying so fucking late every night to watch these good games. Because the East, we've been over this. The East fucking sucks. Nobody wanna <laughs> wants to watch any games in the East because nobody cares. I think it's you know, I would be shocked if the Stanley Cup winner comes out of the East. Absolutely stunned. Edmonton has kind of struggled a little bit on the road recently. Uh, they did get that. Overtime win against Winnipeg, but they lost to Ottawa. They lost to Toronto. They lost to St. Louis. You know, uh, and that's a little bit concerning for me uh, for Edmonton, especially going against, you know, the red hot Dallas Stars. Now, one thing to note, though, is this is Dallas's first game back after a four game uh, a road trip. 
And often we see teams that go on road trips, when they do get back from it, they have a slow start at home for whatever reason. They get home late because there's usually a day off after the uh, after those road, road trips. I think they've actually had a couple days off. So maybe this, this may not apply that much to a team that only gets one day off after that road trip. But often we see a little bit of heavy legs for that home team. When you think, oh, they're going to be back at home, they're going to be up and going. Well, that, that hasn't been the case all year. So if Edmonton wants to, you know, get in and come out firing and, and you know, jump all over Dallas, they might be able to catch them a little bit flat-footed just because of the schedule. Uh, again, it's hard to say because Dallas has been so good. And, you know, they did win four on the road. Okay, but look at the teams that they played. They played Arizona. They played San Jose. They played Vancouver, which has been sub-500. And they played Seattle. Okay, so... Not the most impressive of schedule. They actually beat Arizona twice and Pittsburgh, like all teams that they should be beating. I mean, it's not easy to beat these teams every night, but they did a good job. They took care of business. I think their last loss was actually to fucking New Jersey. Oh my God. No one cares. That was March 14th. That was like a fucking year ago. No one cares. But yeah, it's going to be a good game, Birdsy. I'm expecting the big guns to come and play. Jamie Benton has been red hot too. He's been racking up the points left, right, and center. So, uh, you know, anytime prop, anytime goal for Jamie Ben, I wouldn't mind that at all. Uh, you know, with Skinner not going, I'd like to believe that this could be a little bit of a higher scoring game, but it also could be a very tight checking game too. So it's 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 going to be a tough one to cap just because these two teams are gearing up for the playoffs. They're possibly going to see each other sooner or later at some point. Uh, and you you always want to win those you know same conference games, so it's going to be a good game. I'm going to watch this one. Well, I mean, in a seven game series, if these two were facing off each other, I I would take Dallas all day, any day. But I mean, when it is just a single game matchup, and we're not into the playoffs just yet, I mean, anything can fucking happen. Um, but you know, coming off of, I mean, you know, I know you like to downplay the Sharks winning streak, you know, on their road trip. You know, but they did outscore their opponents 16 to 6. So they didn't just win four in a row against, you know, sub 500 teams or sub playoff teams. They did kick the shit out of them. Um, and in total, they're running, a, running, riding a seven game win streak. Um, you talked about Jamie Ben. He's found a little bit of the fountain of youth playing between, you know, little Stankoven and Wyatt Johnson. Um, Jason Robertson, he's over a point per game this year. Um, you know, you don't really hear too much about the stars out or the stars in Dallas. Um, but they are producing um, for sure. And, you know, one of the biggest stories in Dallas that we really got to acknowledge and keep an eye on is, is Jake, the snake Ottinger, man. I mean, he's looking like he's exercised some early season demons. He's on a five Oh heater right now. I mean, it, 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 I don't see a single chink in any of Dallas's armor. And um, another, another little player prop that I want to keep an eye on that I'll be sprinkling a little something out is on Matthew Shane. Um, you know, he's, he's only found the score sheet. Uh, once in the last five games, but in the two meetings that they've had with Edmonton this year, he does have four points, two goals, two assists. So I like to see Matty Duchesne wake up a little bit. He likes playing against these Oilers. Honestly, at plus 105 for Edmonton, depending on your sports book, I almost would have to take that even money because Dallas is due for a letdown spot. They've been hot for a while, and we all see what gets hot gets cold with Nashville, uh, you know, Vancouver. Winnipeg, all these teams that go on these long streaks, eventually something gives. And if Dallas breaks their streak, it should be tonight against Edmonton. So Edmonton, even money or a plus money, depending on your sports book, I'd be all over that. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> so we got New Jersey winning by seven goals and Edmonton <laughs> taking the shit out of the stars tonight. All right, yeah. guys, that's going to wrap it up for us over here today. <clears throat> excuse me uh we'll be back for another episode over here tomorrow make sure you guys get over to whylose.com grab some packages from less we got 49 dollar days 99 dollar weeks 199 gets you all the way through the stanley cup finals where you will not see new jersey new jersey hoisting the cup tonight uh make sure you hit the like button subscribe follow on all of our social medias keep an eye on telegram for up to minute news um what, what are we expecting on the card tonight les 
we got lots of props on tonight's card, Bernsey, especially with a couple weird matchups or some heavy favorites out there. We tend to fade those minus 200 spots. And obviously we wouldn't be playing the New Jersey game anyway, because they hate me uh, and I hate them. So that's fine. But we do have been, we have been quite successful with the prop bets lately. We give a lot of free prop bets on here. Uh, we save the best ones for the card. So if you want to know what they are, you know, that's 49 bucks for a day pass. It's super cheap. You can easily recover your investment. Uh, we post our results all the time in the Telegram. What we've looked like from January 1st right up until now. We're up, you know, 24% ROI, which, you know, you're not going to make that in the stock market unless you're day trading and, 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 and you know, you're fading Bitcoin or whatever the fuck it is you do there. So, you know, get in, get with, get in with us. We give a lot of free picks. I'm always I'm open book on Instagram. People message me, ask me for advice. I'm always open to that. Love helping people out. Uh, but yeah, make sure you follow along and we're good. We're right down to the wire here, Bernsey. So question is, is. Who the fuck is getting into the East with everybody on there? I guess we'll find out in about 10 days, eh? Does it even fucking matter the way Everlow's played? Matter. Who cares? They're getting <laughs> the first round exit anyway. All right, guys. Enjoy the hockey tonight. We'll see you back over here tomorrow. Take care. Stay well. Have a great night.